game three, 19 to eight. Here's the Yankees lineup. Jeter, Rodriguez, Sheffield, Matsui, Williams, and Posada. Same group as last night with one exception. That's the guy at first. Tony Clark taking over for the injured John Olrood. Hit on his left instep last night with his bat, and it's swollen. He can't go tonight. And Derek Lowe, when he walked out to the bullpen to get loose tonight, the crowd that was here gave him a roaring ovation. They gave him the same when he came in from the bullpen. Will they be doing the same? Let's say an hour from now. Here's his scouting report. And no pitcher on either side depends on their infield defense more than Derek Lowe, who is a dominant ground ball pitcher. About 75% of the balls hit off Derek Lowe this season that were put in play were put in play on the ground. Derek Jeter right off Lowe. Already a break for the Red Sox. Wow. They have to hope Lowe's okay. That thing was headed for center field, and it's a put out 1 5 3. Ground round off the leg of Derek Lowe on the first pitch is Derek Jeter. It looked like it hit him in the muscle. He appears to be all right. So Lowe takes care of the first man, Jeter. And now it's Alex Rodriguez. Baseball fans, grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Rodriguez takes a strike. Said it in our open. The Red Sox have no idea what to expect out of Derek Lowe tonight. Here's a guy who during the regular season won 14 games. That's out of play. He won 21 games two years ago, 17 games last year, and he has been upset and not quiet about being upset that he's been banished to the bullpen so far this postseason. A free agent to be. What an opportunity. Ball one. Terry Francona said it doesn't matter if Derek Lowe is mad at me and wins tonight because he's mad at me. That'll be fine. He'll take it. Two and two. After Rodriguez at Sheffield. So long as Lowe is able to channel that energy and anger wherever it's toward, well hopefully it's toward about executing quality pitches for the Red Sox sake. With one out, the base is empty, 2-2. Two -two. It's still two and two on A-Rod. You see his career numbers against Derek Lowe. A 2 2 sinker. Rodriguez out. About earlier, so important backing up this guy who gives up. One ground ball after another back to the strikeout. Yeah the one reason that Alex Rodriguez has a tough time with Derek Lowe is he could bury that ball in on the hands as he did on that two strike count. Strike one to Sheffield who is hitting six ninety two. He and his partner behind him have been tough outs but not here. That's exactly what Lowe and the Red Sox needed, a perfect first. Take a look at the lineup facing Orlando El Duque Hernandez, who is a veteran of postseason work. It's Damon, then Cabrera up in the number two spot. They move Bellhorn, who has really struggled, down into the number nine position. Same in the middle. Ramirez, Ortiz, the three four combination. And El Duque is on the mound. He last pitched on October 1st. He's been going through a dead arm stage as he lets one fly out toward his second baseman, Miguel Cairo. And he's ready to start after doing this in the regular season. Started 8 0. But then his arm started to give out on him. Damon. Strike one. 
even as late as during the division series against Minnesota Hernandez was throwing in the bullpen and topping out at 81 miles per hour. The Yankees wanted to bring him along in case his arm came back. They say his velocity is back around 87 88. That first pitch was an 87 mile an hour fastball. And Joe Torre has this veteran who is nine and three in his postseason history on the mound tonight. Two and one. After Vasquez had to go long last night. Primary long reliever for Joe Torre Esteban Loiza with possible help from Tanyan Sturtz. The opposite way and a good pickup by Rodriguez. Very good play and we get the scouting report from Leo Estacio and El Duque. Translator Leo Estacio for the Cuban born right hander El Duque. The first pitch is a strike with Cabrera ducking out of the way. And translated, El Duque has to hit his spots. Arm strength equals effectiveness. Pitches with guile, not power. And for the most part, that was what he was talking about. Good breaking ball to Cabrera to lead off this at bat. And 0 1. Left side and foul. Strike two. El Duque came to the Yankees in 98. Was with New York from 98 through 02 and then traded to Montreal in January of 2003 but didn't pitch because of a partially torn rotator cuff. The Yankees signed him in the offseason to a major league deal. And he rewarded them down the stretch. It's bigger reason why the Yankees held off the Red Sox in the regular season as anybody in the New York starting rotation. Brian Cashman the GM of the Yankees. And 0-2 to Cabrera. Two out. A ground out, a strikeout, and Manny Ramirez will bat with the bases empty. Think about that sequence. Two breaking balls, and now a fastball slices the outside corner. Coldest night of this series so far. In the low 50s when we started it'll be in the 40s by the time we end it. And here's Ramirez. Only three out of 12 no RBIs in this ALCS. There have been 130 during the regular season. Ball one. David Ortiz with a tender back getting ready in the on deck circle. Broadcast also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television. Fourteenth postseason start for Hernandez, and he's three and zero on Ramirez. Manny Ramirez when given the hit sign on three and oh does not have to pull the ball power the other way. But he can look for a strike away and still hit it out. Taking three and one. And there's Hernandez hitting 90 on the radar gun. That's a good sign for the Yankees. Arm strength equals effectiveness. Take a look at the defense around El Duque. See how the Yankees cover really handled playing the green monster well so far. This game is starting out exactly the way it did for Kevin Brown last night, except Damon was a, a, a ground ball to short and a strikeout to Bellhorn with a walk to Ramirez. It's absolutely important that Damon and now Cabrera need to get on so that it's much more difficult to pitch to Ramirez and now Ortiz. 
David Ortiz. Ball one, and that's really the bigger point. I mean, you can say that Ramirez hasn't driven in a run, but he's had only three opportunities with anybody on when he's been at the plate, and that's because Damon is now one out of 14, and Bellhorn, who's been in the number two spot, is one for 12. They're your table setters. You have to get your top guys on. A 1 0 to Ortiz. 2 0. Left handers are very difficult for El Duque. Right handers batting only 200 for his career, but left handers give him a ton of trouble. All the way, and it's three and zero. Oh. The last time he saw David Ortiz stand there like a statue on a 2-0 pitch, 55 mile an hour 2-0 pitch. That's a pitch that was oh so slow. A 3-0. Three, oh. three balls and a strike. Jason Veritek is on deck. The Red Sox were down two games to none last year in the division series, best of five to Oakland and came back and won. Lowe was a big part of that in game five as Ortiz checks his swing. It's a full count. Ramirez will go with the pitch. It's another good sign for Orlando Hernandez when a an RBI guy like David Ortiz checks his swing on a 3 1 pitch. Well, you hate to do that. 2 0, 3 1. You hate to have a check swing. Tech will bat with two on and two out. Here is Scooter talking about the curveball, which El Duque features. This is Scooter. You know, a sweeping curveball can save my gorgeous face from getting smacked. I scoop from one side of the plate to the other and drop down at the same time. So remember, a sweeping curveball sweeps right over home plate. Well, the curveball, it's not necessarily how, how you hold it. It's how it comes out of your hand. And what you try to do is make sure your hand is on top of the ball and the ball comes out over top so that you get a downward effect or in some cases like Orlando he throws it on the side and you get more of a side spin to it. But in either way you want to spin the ball. You don't want to throw it as much as you want to spin it. Thank you sir. Two on with two out. I know a guy who talked a lot about the curveball with you was Sandy Koufax. As Veritek digs in with an opportunity to give the Red Sox a first inning lead. Sandy Koufax had the best curveball I have ever seen. And I don't know if this is true, but apparently somebody documented that his curveball spun five times more revolution than a normal major league curveball. Right? They slowed wow. it down to a point where, and Sandy always talked about spin your curveball, learn how to spin it. There are a lot of hitters from the late 50s, early 60s that would believe that, <laughs> whether it's right or true or not. Right. One ball, no strikes. Veritek has driven home four runs in this LCS. That's foul on a broken bat. One ball, one strike. El Duque got a good, looked like a cut fastball. He's going to have to do that, like Tim said, in order to get these left handers out and not be able to use the green monster and left. They ha he has to be able to come inside and jab those guys and elevate stay upstairs. Kevin Brown came in last night but he kept the ball low. Down and in is not a good spot for a left handed hitter. Big 
Veritek, a real leader on this Red Sox team, is in the hole one and two. Jason Veritek on his walk here, and we talked about it during the season, Joe. There's one guy the Red Sox have to sign. It's this man right here. There are quite a few on that list for Boston, including Pedro Martinez. And tonight's starter, Derek Lowe. Two on, two out, one two pitch. Veritek strikes out. Did not have a good swing at that pitch, and we go into the second. Back to back walks from El Duque. The Red Sox strand a couple. No score after one. For the first time in this ALCS, the Yankees were kept off the scoreboard in the first inning. And for the first time, they went down in order. A 1 2 3 first with Jeter, Rodriguez, and Sheffield. And now Derek Lowe deals with Hideki Matsui and starts him with a check swing strike. Matsui is hitting 600. In this series against Boston pitching, and for the postseason, 500. One ball, one strike. What has he done this postseason? 500 average. There's three home runs. There's 13 RBIs, and he scored 10. And he lines one fair down the left field line. Takes a funny bounce, and Manny Ramirez will come up throwing. Too late. It's a leadoff double for Matsui. Now 10 out of 16 in this series is Matsui. When he first came to the United States last year, he had a very difficult time with the two seam fastball. This year, he has done more of this move the ball the other way. So that's outstanding hitting going the other way with the sinker and better base running going to second on a ball that most guys would stop at first. Now it's Bernie Williams. He gets lost in the shuffle of Rodriguez, Sheffield, and Matsui, and Williams is hitting 400, six out of 15. And is now first in LCS history for hits, runs, RBIs, and walks. Strike one. Good career for Bernie Williams against his right hander Derek Lowe. One ball, one strike. Once you go inside with that first fastball, it really opens up the outside part of the plate. That's where Lowe would prefer to get Bernie Williams out because it's very difficult to pull that ball away. All the Yankees need is a ground ball the other way to the right side to advance Matsui. The 1 1. Strike two. In this series, four out of eight with runners in scoring position. Now, Lowe may come right back in there because now the strikeouts are viable. And so if Bernie Williams took that. Fastball on the inside corner to start out the at bat. He may get another one in there. Williams right on top of the plate. Back away, and it's two and two. The 2 2 pitch. Williams grounds it to the right side. He gets Matsui over to third, one out here in the second. Hard hit right at Bellhorn. That gives the RBI opportunity, makes it easier on Jorge Posada. Last night in the early innings, the Red Sox moved their infield in. 
in a similar situation and Terry Francona is going to do that again. Normally you wouldn't do this to the middle or late innings in a tie ball game but the Red Sox are in desperate straits here tonight having to win this ball game and not willing to give up any runs. Yankees trying to take a second inning lead Posada takes a strike. In his career in the postseason Posada is only a 228 hitter with runners in scoring position. But this is a spot where he doesn't even have to come up with a hit. Oh and two. Say this for Derek Lowe, the early returns on him. He's not tentative. He's come right after these hitters. He's certainly being aggressive and pounding the zone with his sinker. Here he's got a perfect opportunity. He needs a strikeout or an infield pop up. Like Tim said, the middle infielders are halfway. They're conceding a slow round, the grounder up the middle, but a hard grounder up the middle could be a play at home plate. Anything that disappears in the dirt. Posada just got a piece. That was actually a mistake slider. Pretty much right down the middle. That's not a good 0 2 pitch. You have three pitches to execute here. That's middle outer half on a breaking ball. You can't think that the catcher cannot block the ball or keep it in front of him. If you're throwing a breaking ball, you must think in the dirt. Down and in, one ball, two strikes. Fenway Park was wild early last night and quiet for the final let's say two hours. The Yankees were having their fun. Derek Lowe is trying to keep the Yankees off the board first in game four. Two and two. Sierra next. Left side, the throw home by Cabrera. Matsui out. And a terrific move by Terry Francona. This is not done this often, bringing the infield in in the second inning of a scoreless game. And it pays off big for the Red Sox. Terry Francona who has had one move one pitching change after another second guest by fans and media alike up here especially in this series bringing the infield in and it pays off even a double clutch by Cabrera still enough time to get Matsui and I don't quite understand it Joe I mean uh, Kurt Schilling gets hurt and Terry Francona's moves are second guess why because Kurt Schilling got hurt. Makes no sense. Some question the work of the bullpen last night and those who were selected early Mendoza less canic. Terry Francona. Really made a point. To pat Tim Wakefield on the back for what he volunteered to do last night. He said make sure you talk about. This guy being behind me while the Yankees were going crazy with the bats. With his spikes on saying what do you want me to do. He gave up his start tonight to go into the bullpen last night try to stop the bleeding and that didn't work. But Francona was. Pleased. That Wakefield was there. To try and help out. Again Romero Mendoza comes in in the third inning. Oscana Oscanic in the in the fourth inning. What are you going to do use Mike Timlin then. Use your short man Keith Folk. What's the second guess. Here's the one one. Strike two on Sierra. I just know as a team member when you have a teammate like what Wakefield did last night it's all about team and in this time obviously Wakefield saw the what was going on for him to give up his start. There's nothing less to say about what he really means and what he means it's about team not about him. There's nothing I about that at all and your teammates appreciate that tremendously. No I and team. Runner at first, two out, one ball, two strikes. Two 
two and two on Sierra with his crowd chanting D low. That's a nickname for Derek Lowe. A double by Matsui. Williams moved him over. Posada couldn't drive him in. Full count. Goes Sierra inning over. Them along. Also pleased to have Dennis Leary as part of our open. How great was that? A Boston Red Sox fan. And that guy that's a part of the Fox family now with that terrific show rescue me on FX if you haven't seen that catch it it's worth it it's great Trot Nixon first up for Boston in the second strike one from Hernandez El Duque pitched around back to back two out walks it was a long first inning for Hernandez but he struck out Veritek Two on and two out. One ball, one strike on Nixon. Trot got hot at the end of the regular season in this ALCS, four out of 12. Nixon homered here last night and Hernandez is taking forever to bring these pitches home. Here's a 1 1. Nixon got under it into right field for Sheffield. One out Millar coming up throughout the LCS. We're going to identify a key matchup in the game and determine who holds the direct TV advantage. Tonight we compare the Red Sox and the Yankees starting pitchers. And you see the ERA for the Yankees isn't great. But when you compare it to what's going on on the other side. And then that opponent's average against. This is just the starting pitching. It's easy to figure out why the Yankees are up three games to none. Here's Millar. Strike one. And it's the way that the Yankees have gone up three games to none. Strong pitching in games one by Messina, game two by John Lieber, and an exhilarating offense last night. That's high and tied a ball and a strike on Millar, who in his last 11 games against Yankee pitching is hitting 385. Last night, one out of five with a double. One of 15 Boston hits. And with a beach ball loose down the right field line in the corner. We have to wait longer for a 1 1 pitch. The 1 1 to Millar. Trying to cling to anything here in the early going of game four hoping that the Red Sox can win tonight. Force game five tomorrow night which would be a matchup with Pedro Martinez on regular rest. That's where the rain out could really help Boston. Taking on Mike Messina. A 3-1 to Millar. Big rip full count. <laughs> you can see that look on Kevin's face. He'd like that pitch back again. A little wry smile.
out of that mistake. Here's a 3-2. Millar pops it up. Right side for Cairo. Two out. A reminder, if there is a game five tomorrow, that game will be at 5 o'clock Eastern. It'll be the earlier of the two games with St. Louis and Houston coming after game five tomorrow night. And we assume that Pedro Martinez will be the starting pitcher, but we don't know that. He had not come to the clubhouse when we had our meeting with Terry Francona early this afternoon. So with two out, nobody on, here is Miller. A lifetime 334 hitter here at Fenway Park. Last year's AL batting champ. Battled knee injuries most of the year this season. That missed ball one. Now your point in the open about taking one pitch at a time and executing all that. It's almost like the Red Sox have to have a, a football mentality. The Patriots won today. The football players play once a week. And that's a mentality the Red Sox I think have to have right now. There's a strike one ball one strike. It really is. It all comes down to one pitch at a time. Even right out of the shoot here, you see Al Duque. He's making really good pitches on some of these guys. Veritek coming in, in. Veritek swings at a high fastball away. That last bat to Millar, he was in, in, and then threw a ball away. Miller hits it into left field. That's a base hit. Matsui over to get it. And Bill Miller is on with a two out single to bring in Bellhorn. Now, this pitch is right down the middle. You saw it cut a little bit. It's outer third, outer half. But for a 1-1 count, and as good as El Duque is, and you heard him in the pregame, he had his scout report, and he talked about control, his ability to, to throw the ball where he wants and when, which makes him very unpredictable. You sit off speed, he throws enough fastballs. You think he's going to start throwing fastballs, speed you up, he throws off speed. He's got a real uncanny knack to identify what you're looking for. Bellhorn with two out takes a strike. Bellhorn last night struck out four times and he is only one for 12 in this series against Yankee pitching. And in the postseason overall two out of 23. So he finds himself in the number nine spot tonight. Oh and two. So every time he looks up at the scoreboard he sees two strikes. Club record 177 strikeouts this season for Bellhorn. And he walked 88 times. That means 265 plate appearances. He did not put the ball in play. And 0 2. Strikes out here to end the second. Red Sox have left three. Inning number three and in game number four. Look at the Charles River. Fenway in the distance. No score after two. Tony Clark gets the start tonight because of the instep injury on the part of John Olroot. Injured himself late last night. It came in the sixth inning. And it was swollen and stiff, so he's not able to go tonight. Tony Clark is. He takes a pitch down and in ball one. And how many times do you see a guy who gets one of those rare chances to start? With well, the way Joe Torre's teams have been going in the postseason since '96, you can expect something out of Tony Clark tonight. One ball, one strike. Last night, sixth inning, and it was actually the bat on his follow-through coming around when he dropped it, cracking him on the left instep. He came out and he's not able to play tonight. Strike two on Clark. Tony had only 253 at bats this season for the Yankees and hit 16 home runs and drove in 49 runs. Tony and Ruben Sierra godsends to the Yankee Yankee ball club this year. A real off speed hitter. You can't speed up his bat head. Lowe thought he had out number one instead it's ball two. 
Backdoor breaking ball. This is very, very close. Low pitched around a leadoff double in the second. Tony Clark has run the count full. Miguel Cairo, the number nine hitter, next. Three and two, Clark pops it foul back and out of play. Chris? Yeah, Joe, in the Yankee dugout, you can hear the phrase, keep the line moving, keep the line moving. That's what the Yankee players are telling each other when they come off the field in between innings. It's a phrase they've latched on to. I mean, they know they won't be moving like last night when they scored 19 runs, but they think they can hit Derek Lowe, even though they say Lowe's cutter is cutting pretty hard tonight. Here's a 3-2 pitch to Clark leading off, and he pops it up into right center field. Plenty of time for Damon. One out. And with the bases empty, Miguel Cairo will be the hitter. Derek Lowe against the Yankees this season, 2-3. and three, With a 9.28 ERA. And in his career, as a starter six and nine with an ERA of just under six and a half against the Yankees. Last year's ALCS against New York in two starts. Here's Cairo and there's strike one. Rudy Giuliani made the trip up. One ball, one strike. Who's he root for? It's tough to tell. He's really <laughs> kept that close to the vest over the years. It ain't the team you play for. <laughs> Kirk Gowdy is here. And he watches Cairo hit a two-hopper to Cabrera. High throw, but out. Two gone. Now you started to dissect some of the pitching that we've seen in this series. Well, you, it's all about pitching. I just want to show the good pitching of Musita there. You see how these pitch counts or, or the counts themselves. That's a pitch that was supposed to be away. It was middle. Musita on a one-two count. Curveball in the dirt. You have a chance to expand. You throw your breaking ball in the dirt. Here you see last night a one-one count to A-Rod. Hanger down the middle. Not that he tried to do it, but you can't do that at this level. Two-two count. Slider down the way to Cabrera. Good fastball hitter. 1-0 slider down the middle. That's why Major League hitters hit these balls. If a pitcher executes and makes good pitches, you can have a low-scoring game. So far, Derek Lowe has done that. Here's Jeter. Who, believe it or not, with all these Yankee runs, is only two out of 12 in this ALCS. So he has not, for the most part, been in on the fun. A Rod next, but two out, nobody on. Top of the order will bat for the Red Sox in the bottom of this third. Clark fly to center. Cairo grounded out. Strike two. Hey, Mitch. Gotta believe. Is that one of your passes there? <laughs> Is he in the upper deck? <laughs> Two out, nobody on, a ball and two strikes on Jeter. There's a good pitch. There's a one-two pitch that was in under the hands of Jeter, a guy who with two strikes loves to go the other way. It's exactly where it was. In and off at the belt. Jeter, as good as anybody in baseball, can pull his hands in and still push the ball to right field. You could say the previous pitch, the slider 1-1, one, one, was a hanger right down the middle, but it was much slower. There's my buddy. On one and two, Jeter goes the other way. It's foul. He 
in covering the Yankees and Red Sox over the years we have marveled at how Kevin Millar has played off the line so much at first base leaving that slot between the first baseman and the bag. Jeter almost found it in fair territory. Another one two. Talk about hitting charts with hitters that are compiled within a year and then year to year and they are perfectly spread out with his Boston defense for Jeter who's liable to hit it anywhere. The one two he pulls this one and it's off the glove of Miller into left. That's a two out single for Jeter and keeps the inning alive for Alex Rodriguez. After trying to fight off a bevy of fastballs inside he turns on one. In between hop for Miller clearly a base hit off the heel of the glove of Bill Miller. Running situation right here the one thing Derek Lowe cannot do is hold runners on 36 tried to steal 34 made it. Aaron goes into left center field back at the wall Alex Rodriguez has hit one over the monster to make it two nothing New York. A two out hit by Jeter and Rodriguez just went deep for the second time in this LCS. First pitch swinging and a rod did not miss it. Right up around the letters. Ooh. Now that ball right down the pipe. Like hitting it off a tee. And way out as strike one is on the outside corner to Sheffield. There was a twelve million dollar difference in money when the Boston Red Sox were so close to making Alex Rodriguez a member of their team. That deal fell apart. The Yankees swooped in. They were willing to trade Alfonso Soriano. And they got Alex Rodriguez switched him to third base. He had a very good year as that ball makes its way all the way back onto the field from Lansdowne that he hit out. And Damon throws it back. <laughs> This could go on all night. I no, threw it over. And it comes back. This could go on all night. Put it in your pocket, Joe. Joe West, the second base umpire. Thank you. <laughs> Did that come from the street? Yeah, I think so. Damon threw it back after it was thrown back, and somebody threw it back again. And Joe put it in his pocket, and that stopped that. It's an 0-2 count on Sheffield. Sheffield fly to right his first time up. Chase. A two out hit by Jeter. A two out, two run shot by Alex Rodriguez. Yankees trying to sweep after two and a half up, two nothing. Alex Rodriguez took Derek Lowe out. It's two nothing Yankees, bottom of the third, and the top of the order for Boston. And that means Johnny Damon, who is one out of 14 in this series. Time is running out on guys like Damon and others at the top of this lineup to try and kickstart this offense. Reaching for it, and a little fly ball into left from Matt Suey. One out here in the. Th Here's Cabrera, who struck out his first time. 
One of the highlights for the Red Sox last night was the play of Orlando Cabrera. Three out of four, two RBIs, and showed off great range at short. Strike one from El Duque. You look at what's gone on, the one through four hitters in this series, the Yankees hitting 483 with five homers, 20 RBIs. One through four for the Red Sox, only three RBIs and an average of 212. Ball and a strike on Cabrera. The winner of this series will face the winner of the St. Louis Houston series and congratulations to the Astros tying that series. Beltron with eight home runs in this postseason and his homer won it for the Houston Astros today picked up by the Astros from the Kansas City Royals at the trading deadline. What a player he has proven to be in the postseason. Cabrera hits one in the air to left field. Matsui on the track. Two out. You look at the numbers for Carlos Beltran, and it should come with the sound effect of Cha Ching. This guy is going to be a free agent at the end of the year. Eight homers, 14 RBIs, and a 500 average this postseason. And Scott Boris, his agent, has to be drooling at the possibilities with the numbers that he can put together in a contract for Carlos Beltran. A lot of people speculate he'll end up with the Yankees because there won't be many teams that will be able to afford the kind of dollars they're talking about now. Ball one to Manny Ramirez. Ramirez walked his first time. 2 and 0. Somebody for the Red Sox is going to have to sling this team on their back tonight and if the series lasts beyond four games that person's going to have to carry this ball club after the injury to Schilling in game one it was an opportunity for Pedro Martinez to do something in game two he pitched OK but he only went six innings and he lost to John Lieber Manny Ramirez David Ortiz. Baratek Nixon somebody has to step up for Boston and pick up this Red Sox club. Three and one on Manny Ramirez. Terry Francona waiting for that to happen. The base is empty two down three balls and a strike on Ramirez. And it's a full count as Ramirez has to come back. This man he thought that ball was low or outside or both. And it was neither. Perfect pitch on three and one. A strikeout for Orlando Hernandez four on the night Matsui will lead it off down below it's two nothing New York fourth inning rolls in and Matsui takes a strike Matsui doubled and then was thrown out at the plate and a fielder's choice hit into by Posada that was back in the second one ball one strike. Chopper to second for Bellhorn. And Matsu 
Dewey has been retired. One out here in the fourth inning. And Bernie Williams will be the hitter. You think about Matsui, who has entrenched himself as the cleanup hitter for the New York Yankees, a team that's one win away from another trip to the World Series, which would be the seventh time in the nine years that Joe Torre has taken over. What a year it's been for Japanese players coming to the United States and how they've blossomed. And the record that was set this year by Ichiro with the 262 hits and leading baseball with a 372 average. Ball one now to Bernie Williams. Williams grounded out his first time. And you would think that of the two, Ichiro and Matsui, that Ichiro would be more popular in his native land. Not even close. Matsui by a landslide. Joe Torrey telling us before the game even tonight, popularity off the charts. Anybody who has the nickname Godzilla, I guess he would be off the charts. Yeah, yeah. it's a good sign. Above the charts. With one out and nobody on, one ball, one strike on Williams. Strike two. After Williams, it's Posada. Derek Lowe on one and two. Williams grounds one to the right side. Millar flips. Lowe steps. Two out. Forget the nickname. Two out. Nobody on. And here's Posada. Derek Lowe trying to have a perfect inning. And he starts Posada with a strike. Strike two. Posada learning from the first two left handed hitters this inning. Matsui and Bernie Williams. You cannot pull that sinker of Derek Lowe's. Matsui tried to do it. Williams tried to do it. And feebly grounded to the right side. Ball one. Red Sox team trying to fight their way up a huge hill. Trailing 2 0 here in the fourth inning of game four, down three games to none. In fact, the Red Sox have led a total of seven minutes. That's it in this series. Left side in the hole, and Cabrera can't get to it. Last night, the only lead. Came in the second inning, a short lived 4 3 lead for seven minutes. Then the Yankees came right back and tied it. The Alex Rodriguez home run moments later, and it was all New York after that. That's a good approach by Posada. As we said, learning from both Matsui and Williams trying to pull the ball. When you hit that sinker the other way, you're, you're actually allowing the fat part of the bat to trail the way the ball is sinking away. If you pull away, you hit it on the end of the bat, as Matsui and Williams did. Sierra takes the ball. Ruben struck out his first time up. The Red Sox in the bottom of this fourth inning will have Ortiz, Veritek, and Nixon trailing by at least two. On the outside corner, and Sierra didn't like the call. That might have been off a little bit. Low got the call, one ball, one strike. Big hole on the right side of the infield as Sierra takes it wide, two and one.
Ruben Sierra takes wide again, three and one. Sierra during the regular season at 17 home runs and then has that one huge home run in this postseason in the division series in game four at Minnesota, which tied that game in the eighth inning at five. The Yankees went on to win it in extra innings. He's sitting on a pitch here on three and one. Full count. 3 1 breaking ball to Ruben Sierra. Now Lowe can go back to either of his pitches, the fastball or the breaking ball. That's the beauty of throwing that breaking ball in a fastball count. Sierra just got a piece. Just fighting off a changeup here. This inning, Derek Lowe has shown with a sinker about 87 to 90, and then he throws it off a changeup, which looks just like his sinker coming out of his hand, except this about six miles an hour slower. That's where you see those lefties reaching out a little bit, out in front. Unlike what Posada did going the other way, you got to stay on that ball. Posada will go from first, 3 2 pitch. Same result. A two run home run by Alex Rodriguez the only damage done tonight. 69th pitch of the night coming. From Derek Lowe. Another 3 2 pitch and there's Sierra going the other way. Manny Ramirez ends the inning. A two out hit by Posada. David Ortiz goes after the first pitch bottom of the fourth inning. Strike one two nothing Yankees on the Rodriguez home run. El Duque will deal with Ortiz Veritek and Nixon. As the Red Sox are looking for a jolt. Ortiz walked his first time and he pops it up here. Right center field and it's Sheffield. Wind is really carrying this ball and making these outfielders adjust late. Our Bank of America higher standards we flash back one year ago yesterday. Wakefield 11th inning game seven Aaron Boone. That sent the Yankees into the World Series only to lose in six to the Florida Marlins. And that makes you think of the passing of Aaron's grandfather, Ray Boone. And so the Boone family knows, and maybe they do already, there was a nice tribute to Ray Boone here at Fenway Park before the start of the game, a moment of silence. It read the career resume of Ray Boone, and for a guy who sat in your seat last year, Al, Brett Boone, a good friend of Fox Sports we realized how close those two were last October he idolized his grandfather and baseball was saddened at the news that Ray Boone had passed away Ray Boone the patriarch of the first three generation baseball family Ray and then his son Bob and his grandsons Aaron and Brett and our condolences to the Boone family. One ball two strikes one out nobody on Veritek at the plate he struck out with two on and two out in the first Orlando Hernandez doing exactly what Joe Torrey and Mel Stottlemyre thought he might if his arm got through that dead arm period when even with El Duque not available to pitch early in this series. They put him on hoping his arm would respond on the active roster. He's turned in three and a third shutout innings to this point. Make it three and two thirds as he gets his fifth strikeout. Two out here in the fourth. First 13 starts for Hernandez an eight and oh record and an ERA of two and a half. This is a guy that when he was out there throwing for scouts and for general managers anybody could have signed him. I think because of his history with the New York Yankees they figured why not 
Take a shot. Let him get his arm healthy in our system. Let him force his way back onto the big league roster. He did, and Brian Cashman and the Yankees thrilled that they made that decision back in May as Nixon has to wait on it and lines at the center for the out. A one, two, three, fourth inning. Fifth inning now. Yankees bat up two back after this from your local Fox station. And Phil Jackson will stop by as Tony Clark lines the base in into left. Talk about Shaq Kobe and his new book. Best damn sports show period. Weeknights only on FSN. A leadoff hit for Tony Clark, and he's on to start the fifth inning. <laughs> Breaking ball hammered to left field by Tony Clark. We said earlier that he is a good breaking ball hitter. Nice try by Cabrera. See what the Yankees do here with Cairo. You could see a bunt. Yep. And he shows it, but takes ball one low and away. Joe Torre does that a lot. He'll bunt early in the count, and then if the count favors the hitter, He'll hit and run. Cairo trying to get Clark down to second. With Derek Jeter up next. It would seem to me that a bunt is still in order. I think uh, Cairo will be bunting at least up to two strikes. A 1 0, the bunt. Low, had to re grab, but gets the out at first. Sacrifice down to second as Clark one out. Jeter coming up. And here's Jeannie Zelasco with a game break. Oh, we've got a whole new series in the National League, and the Astros can thank the newest killer B. Carlos Beltran, absolutely incredible. Eight home runs, tying a postseason record throughout the entirety of the postseason, that is. Obviously not in one game, but you never know with that bat. Hey, it is a game five Monday on Fox. The ALCS, if necessary, followed by the NLCS tomorrow night on Fox. All right, Jeannie, thanks. Derek Lowe trying to do his part to make game five necessary. He's allowed two runs, five hits. Jeter has one of them, and he has scored one of the two runs. Our Budweiser fantasy player of today's NLCS game four, Carlos Beltran. Log on to FoxSports.com on MSN, keyword fantasy baseball. Tonight's game is brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Here's a 1-0 pitch to Jeter. Left side, right at Miller. Two out. And the red hot Alex Rodriguez will come to the plate with the even hotter Gary Sheffield on deck. Rodriguez responsible for the two runs tonight with a two out two run shot in the third. And now Orlando Cabrera the shortstop is going to come in and talk to Derek Lowe. A home run last night, a home run tonight. Last night on a hanger. That tied the game at four off Arroyo. And tonight, off low. First pitch swinging after a two out hit by Jeter. And the fans and Johnny Damon played catch. Throwing it back onto the field. Damon threw it back into the seats. Or over the green monster onto the street. And then it came back. What's going on here? Set a hanger last night, and it certainly was that. A lot of people, even in baseball, think that a hanger only pertains to a breaking ball. Fastballs hang too. A hanging slider last night, a hanging fastball. But my definition of a hanger is, is a pitch where the action has stopped in the hitting zone. Whether it's down, up, fastball, slider, changeup, doesn't matter. First Cabrera came in to talk to Derek Lowe and then Veritek went out to talk to Lowe as Rodriguez takes a ball low. What makes Lowe difficult especially with a sinker ball sinker ball pitchers 
throw with a closed foot. If you watch that from, from behind home plate, you'd see how far across the body he's throwing. That enables him to stay inside the ball and stay on top of it and get good sync. You see the downward sync? He's throwing across his body, which would be the back foot by about a foot to the third base side. He's fallen behind 2-0. Oh. Clark, the runner at second, two out. 2 nothing Yankees. That's on the outside corner, 2-1. and one. To reinforce your point, Al, you can see uh, the spot where he lands with that left foot. It's toward the third base side of the pitcher's mound. So there's a landing area for low as he tries to come back from a 2 0 count against Rodriguez. Lead off hit by Clark, a bunt, and then a ground out. And this at bat has a weird feel to it on the part of Rodriguez and Lowe. Lowe has had two meetings on the mound prior to this at bat. And now some stepping off and some games being played down there. And more of it. I don't mind this. Early in the game, Lowe has been shaken off air attack. You could say maybe they're not on the same page, but when a pitcher gets a feel for a pitch, maybe it goes against the scout report that they sat, sat down together two hours before the game. But you want to make sure that your pitcher absolutely is behind the pitch. With Veritek coming out, he's saying, hey, look, what are you thinking here? You're shaking me off. What do you want to do? And get on the same page. This is a critical run right here. Clark at second with two out. They set up away in the end and that's ball three. There's more hopping around from Veritek setting up inside and then down and away. And a rod up on the count three balls and a strike. You can be as careful as you want to be with Alex Rodriguez but a quick glance into the on deck circle and you find a guy who came into this game. Gary Sheffield hitting 692 in this ALCS. The 3 1. Full count. Remember the first at bat, he got to two strikes with the breaking ball and finished off Rodriguez inside with a fastball. If Veritek sets up inside, it's going to be a fastball in on the hands to Rodriguez. 0 for 9 in his postseason career is A-Rod with a runner in scoring position. Make it. 0 for 10. Low gets around the leadoff hit. Halfway through game four, still 2-0 New York. Side to get Rodriguez. Good pitching by Derek Lowe. But no hitting from this Red Sox lineup. Only one hit that had three base runners thanks to back to back walks in the first and that is all. Pilar popped up his first time. Orlando Hernandez the reason. For the futility and offense for Boston. Bottom three in the order for the Red Sox. Two and oh. Hernandez being shut down because of a tired arm. I think there's not a pitcher in baseball that doesn't experience a tired arm once in a while. And how I explain it is it's just where you feel like your arm is dead, as if somebody were to punch you in the shoulder 10, 15, 25 times. 3 0. Oh. It's a heavy arm. Your arm's just feeling dead. Tired arm. But it happens to most every pitcher that I know, and rest absolutely helps. Joe Torre saying the good thing during that period, Hernandez had no pain. That's a leadoff walk. Could that be the spark that the Red Sox need to get some sort of attack mounted against Orlando Hernandez? First time tonight, the Red Sox have had their leadoff 
batter on base, and we talked about it last night. It seems like leadoff walks lead to more multi-run innings than anything. Here's Bill Miller, singled. The only Red Sox hit tonight came back in the second. Ball one. Six in a row have missed, and Posada wants to go out and talk. So while Posada and Hernandez talk, Stottlemyre and Torrey talk. Talking, uh, I would think, about Tanyan Sturts and when to get him up. Two and one. We talked earlier about the long relief. Loiza was a possibility, but I would say the Yankees and Hernandez have played and pitched their way beyond that part of the game. The inconsistent right-hander who came from the White Sox. And now you're looking at Sturge. Quantrill gave the Yankees some good work last night. Gordon Rivera all ready to go tonight. Miller grounds to first. Clark fires to second out. No return throw. One on one out. Jeter not taking a chance because Millar started his slide late and realizing the Yankees have a two run lead. Watch Kevin Millar start the slide a little bit late. I'm not too sure Jeter could see El Duque covering the bag. And Hernandez may be, have been a little bit late in covering. So it's a runner at first, one out. And here is Bellhorn, desperate for a hit. Takes a ball low. A strikeout his first time up. Struck out four times last night. Two and oh. Red Sox need something dramatic to happen to this offense. Bellhorn can do it. 18 home runs. During the season. That's ball three with Johnny Damon in the top of the order on deck. Taking on three and oh, it's three and one. This Reg Sacks lineup during the regular season scored 949 runs. By far the best total in the American League. Shut down tonight by Hernandez, who has walked two here in the fifth inning. Right around 10 o'clock in the East, and if you're just joining us, this is game four of the ALCS. The Yankees up three games to none, and up in this game, two zip. But here's an opportunity that Boston has not had really all night tonight and very few times in this series. Damon up, two on, one out. The Red Sox trying to stay alive. Damon has done basically nothing in this series with a bat. Strike one. A leadoff hitter who was so good all year 
jump starting this exciting Boston lineup hitting 304 94 RBIs is one out of 15. He can change it all with the swing of the bat. And you wonder because of all of that pressure the expectations how patient he will be in this at bat with a chance with two on one out. One ball one strike. Well, Johnny is not a patient hitter to begin with. His long ball is down and in. He is one handed eight or nine home runs in this ballpark right around the pesky pole in right field. So his long ball that pitch down and in. Two balls and a strike. El Duque has been behind every hitter in this inning. Two and two. A fastball by the bat of Johnny Damon. Good fastball on the outside corner to Damon. The changeup before that set that that defensive swing that you saw fastball away. Do a very good changeup before. Put him in a fastball count. Damon on two and two takes ball three. No action for the Yankees in their bullpen right now. That might change if Hernandez does not get Damon. First and third, two out. I think because Johnny Damon is one for 15 in the series, Terry Francona elected not to send the runners. Had they sent them, it would have been interesting to see who covered at second base. Damon beats the throw of Cairo. So the Yankees get the force play, and there are runners at the corner. You know, you're looking back on that thing, and... Had Jeter been covering on that play, you don't know whether he would have been or not. But had he been covering, that opens up that left side, and the Red Sox would have scored a run. So now for Boston, it's up to the man who replaced Nomar Garcia Parra. He's been getting more and more comfortable in his position here at Fenway Park. He came into this game hitting 328 his last 51 games with 34 RBIs. He's 0 for 2 tonight. First and third. And a check on Damon. takes a strike. Good pitch down and away strike two. Breaking ball down in the strike zone. On the first pitch, and this one really sweeping away as Hernandez drops down to get Cabrera in the hole. Oh. 
A step to third, look to first move. I think if you're Johnny Damon at first base, you realize the first two pitches are breaking balls, and you try to run on a breaking ball. If he can guess breaking ball, he could give the Red Sox another runner in scoring position. Yankees lead by two in the fifth. He would have had a chance there. It's ball one. A lot of times, if you, if you can guess with a pitcher and a catcher and know they're going to waste one, it's a good time to run. It's what the Yankees did then. But Damon staying in place at first. Cabrera, one of those two hits in the last 24 chances with a runner in scoring position for Boston. A 1 2. 2 and 2. Also, Posada has thrown out 26% of the base dealers, which I guess wouldn't put him in the higher league lead numbers. You know? All the protection Cabrera could ever want is in the on deck circle in Manny Ramirez. It was 0 and 2, now it's 2 and 2. Hernandez is going to have to come after Cabrera. Now Damon is running and Cabrera fouls a fastball. Good jump by Damon. Tying runs are on for Boston. Here in the fifth. <laughs> to the right side and through. Cabrera delivers a hit, and it's two to one. Does that make it a one run game but it brings Manny Ramirez up one of the few times with men on I'll tell you in a sense Hernandez and Posada gave in to Cabrera he looked terrible on the two breaking balls and now he gets the fastball away and as you suggested Joe uses the right side to put the Red Sox on the board. Here's Ramirez, an MVP candidate this year in the AL. For the Red Sox, they ask for his first RBI or more of this series. Stottlemyre is going to make the slow jog out to the mound as action starts for New York in their bullpen. And it's going to be Heredia of all relievers to get loose for the Yankees with an eye on Ortiz on deck. Heredia and Sturts as Sturts now gets up and he'll start. Well, Cabrera's a fastball hitter, and he got breaking ball, breaking ball, and basically slowing Cabrera down, seeing breaking ball away, another breaking ball away. He's keeping him to stay back longer. The fastball beat him there, and he stayed on the ball and stayed late and just went with it. As a result of all those breaking balls, it slowed Cabrera down to just stay inside the ball and do exactly what he did. That's a great piece of hitting by Cabrera. One ball, no strikes on Manny Ramirez. Good speed on for Boston. Strike one. Ramirez with 43 home runs and 130 RBIs during the regular season. 
Drove in seven during the division series. None so far against the Yankees in the LCS. Two and one. Red Sox getting a lift from Orlando Cabrera. And now they want a ride from Manny Ramirez. Just missed. Three and one. Baseball is a game of inch. Three balls and a strike on Ramirez. Base is loaded. Now the question is Joe Torre. Want to bring in a struggling Felix Heredia to take on the left handed David Ortiz. We'll see if uh, Tori gives Posada the, the puppet side, which tells Posada to go out and talk to Hernandez. Heredia did not have a good regular season. He has not pitched well in the postseason, and it will be Ortiz against Hernandez. A chance for Ortiz. Five walks tonight for. El Duque three in this inning and a guy who got one big hit after another this season and last for the Red Sox David Ortiz could put Boston on top with one swing Felix Heredia, the only left-hander the Yankees have in their bullpen, and the problem with bringing him in with the bases loaded, he's wild. Ortiz into right center, and the Red Sox have taken the lead in Game Four. During the whole season, we have talked about how the Yankees have tried to pitch David Ortiz inside. Hernandez got inside on him with the first pitch and then a changeup right over the heart of the plate. Hammered to center field to give the Red Sox only their second lead in the series. Now it's Veritek. And Hernandez will continue. Ball one. Three walks, two hits in the inning. And with Sturtz and Heredia no doubt ready to go, Veritek will take on the starter, Hernandez. Well, if Torrey does look at matchups, Veritek is 130 lifetime against Hernandez. Something he told us he didn't do before the game. That is a check swing 2 0. Oh. Joe Torre saying he looks at that more for his bench players and for relievers as opposed to his starters against a lineup. And Veritek went awfully far, but the count's 2 0. Oh. 
3 2 Boston, first and third, two out. Three and oh with Trot Nixon next. With all these left handed bats. And with a bullpen that doesn't have a trustworthy left hander in it, it makes this difficult on the Yankees. Three and one. Came back with a 3-0 pitch and challenged him, but challenging him with a 3-1 fastball, a little bit more difficult. Veritek with two homers in this series already. Breaking ball. On three and one. Good pitch to make it full. The clutch breaking ball right there from Hernandez. Veritek with two strikeouts tonight. Make it three. He challenged him with a 3 0 fastball, then breaking balls on consecutive pitches to end the fifth. But it's a three run fifth and a 3 2 Boston lead here in game four. David Ortiz with the go ahead RBIs. And after five innings in game four, it's Boston three, New York two, and the heart of the order will bat for the Yankees. That means Sheffield, Matsui, and Williams against Derek Lowe. Sheffield 0 for 2. Ball to Sheffield. Terry Francona is saying that the one thing Bill Wakefield did, or Tim Wakefield did, for the Red Sox last night, he gave Mike Timlin and Keith Folk innings off and telling us that if necessary, it will be Timlin and Folk for a lot tonight. The count's gone to 2 0, Sheffield. Two home runs this postseason. The tying run at the plate takes a strike. How will Derek Lowe pitch with the lead? Two and two. Side a high hop from Miller. Wow. The league championship series. One out here in the sixth inning. Sheffield is 0 for 3, and here is Matsui. Francona already has Timlin getting loose in the bullpen. I know he's anxious to get to Timlin and eventually Folk. Lowe is doing his job as the starter tonight, getting into the sixth and taking care of Sheffield after falling behind 2 0. Counts 1 1 on Matsui. Into center field, right center. Damon on the run, can't get to it. That ball is into center field all the way to the wall and Matsui will end up at third base with only one out. He's the tying run. Hideki Matsui with yet another extra base hit. He's doubled tonight now triple. Last night the triple the only hit that he needed for the cycle. You talk about a guy who is locked in he is hitting it. Everywhere on the field from line to line and hitting everything that Boston throws. What 
of the key plays in this game was in the second inning when Matsui was thrown out. Terry Francona had the infield in. Well, certainly you had the infield in here. And now it looks like Lowe will be lifted and Timlin will be the pitcher. Lowe is finished, and this crowd appreciates his effort. I was in real pain. Mike Timlin has not pitched since Wednesday in game two, so he's had a ton of rest. And Derek Lowe is relieved here in the sixth inning. The crowd appreciated it. Lowe frustrated at being pulled out of this game here in the sixth inning. But he's not even sitting in the dugout right now. Timlin is in the middle of the action. And you look at his numbers during this postseason. Again, the infield creeps in. Matsui at third, and Bernie Williams takes a ball. And we talked about that key play in the second inning with the infield in. Cabrera to his right and the tag of Matsui. With that having happened, you wonder if Joe Torrey's going to send Matsui again on contact. One thing this pitching change does, though, is take the sinker baller out and bring in a guy like Timlin who's got more juice. But right now, the Red Sox with the infield in, hoping a ground ball's hit at one of these infielders. A hard throwing right hander with a very quiet Fenway Park around him. Trying to keep a one run lead. Two balls and a strike. Posada on deck, but it's all on Bernie Williams. Number one in LCS history in RBIs in his career numbers against Mike Timlin. 0 for 2 against low tonight. Two balls, two strikes. You do take out a ground ball pitcher, but you also bring in a strikeout pitcher in Mike Timlin. And that's what Timlin's gunning for here in the sixth. Still two and two. You also go to a matchup. Bernie Williams is 160, 4 for 25 against Timlin. Against Derek Lowe, he's 340, 16 for 47 with a home run. Two balls, two strikes, the tying run at third, one out. Full count. That's the one he wanted right there, but the fastball stays inside. Two pitch and we'll do it again. Timlin as a kid when he was in the big leagues pitched for Toronto in the postseason got all the way to the World Series pitching against Atlanta in the World Series in 92 and against Philadelphia in the World Series in 93. Runner at third, one out, 3 2 pitch. And a chopper. Matsui was late in coming to the plate. He's going to score to tie it. It's a 3 3 game on that chopper off the bat of Bernie Williams. 
The reason he was late is he was not going on contact. But when you're not going on contact, you do have the right and the responsibility to determine how high the chopper is and run after the delay. The delay right there coming in to tie the ball game. Cabrera tries to barehand the ball. It goes under his hand. I'm not sure he made contact. Maybe with his ring finger. A real break for the Yankees. It goes as an RBI infield base hit for Bernie Williams. And now a ball to Posada. Last night the Red Sox had a lead for seven minutes. Tonight, 16 minutes. After getting three runs in the bottom of the fifth, the Yankees have tied it in the sixth, and they have one on one out. Posada takes ball two. How about that? Talk about a weird game. You're looking for the ground ball. You have the infield in. You get the ground ball, and it's not hit hard enough. And Matsui scores. Matsui right in the middle of it again for the Yankees. Timlin behind on the count, 2-0. and Now 3-0, and and he gets away. Down to second is Bernie Williams. Timlin sinker to Posada is so good it stays low. The sinker to Bernie Williams was so good. Williams tapped it allowing Matsui to score. Here's Bernie Williams hit one more time. Infield in. The delay by Matsui. The barehanded try by Cabrera. And the Yankees tie the ball game. A wild pitch puts Williams in scoring position. 3-0 is in the dirt. These weren't even close from Timlin. And now with two on and only one out, Ruben Sierra will, will be the hitter, and Dave Wallace, the pitching coach, is going to come out and talk. Terry Francona was anxious to get to Timlin, anxious to get into his bullpen. He relieved low after the one-out triple by Matsui. And Timlin has relinquished the lead and now is in further trouble. And that move of pulling low in this sixth inning will be second guessed, you can bet. Everything else that Francona has done to this point has been, and taking low out the way he had pitched. I mean, caught the fans by surprise here. Timlin came charging out of the bullpen and has given up the lead. Here's Sierra, two on, one out. Time called. Well, based on what he told us before the game, he said Timlin and Folk are rested, and we, I will, if the opportunity presents itself, I will use them a lot. A strike to Sierra. But bringing Timlin in here in the sixth inning is a lot could potentially maybe get the Red Sox through the seventh. You're still looking at a long night for your bullpen. With only two of the arms really rested down there. Embry had a rough night last night. With two on one out the 0 1 Sierra takes it in the dirt. Williams goes to third throw down out. Joe Torrey will argue and I don't blame him. He comes out to argue with Randy Marsh. And I'll be anxious to get another look at that play. Two out in the inning. Well, the Yankees got a break last night in the first inning when Manny Ramirez proved to be safe at third base. And now this throw actually beats the runner, but it looks like Bernie Williams trying to hook into the bag. No, he wasn't hooking. He never got there. Williams never got to the bag, and it looked like the tag by Miller Got the, the right foot. foot. Yep. That was a good call by third base umpire Randy Marsh. And what a good play by Billy Miller just sticking his nose in there. Now a 1-1 to Sierra grounded up the middle. 
Bellhorn keeps it on the infield. Throw to first is wild, but Millar does a good job to keep it in play, and it's first and third on a two-out infield single by Sierra. What a huge play that was at third base. Fine play by Bellhorn to come up with it. A better play by Millar to block it at first base. Tell you, Miller does deserve a lot of credit at third base, but so does Jason Veritek, hopping on that ball immediately and throwing out Bernie Williams. I didn't think he had a chance. The left leg, the foot by Miller was guarding the third base bag, and Bernie Williams never got there. Now it's first and third, two out, and Tony Clark, who's one for two tonight could put New York back on top with a hit. Timlin's thrown quite a few pitches in the dirt. He grounds to the right side. Bellhorn knocks it down. Can't make a play in the Yankees lead again. It's a two run sixth inning and a four three Yankee lead. And there's Tony Clark getting the start putting the ball in play and putting New York back in front. And this crowd is chanting Pokey for Pokey Reese. Well, Bellhorn went to his right. Pokey wouldn't have made that play. He might have made that play going to his left. Ball off the heel of the glove. It's an RBI base hit for Tony Clark. Posada scored. He had walked. And the inning continues for Cairo. Another one in the dirt ball one to Cairo. A one out triple by Matsui chased low. And the only out that's been recorded since Timlin came in was over at third. After a pitch was in the dirt and trickled away from Veritek. And he's done exactly what Mike Timlin has done in his career get ground balls. They're seeing eyes on these ground balls here. He's doing exactly what a sinker ball pitcher does. Tanyan Sturtz, it appears, will take over for New York in the bottom of the sixth. It's 2 0 on Cairo. Cairo tonight 0 for 1 with a sacrifice and a ground out. Trying to add to the Yankee lead. Two and one. Tory wants to go ahead. Two on, two out, two balls and a strike on Cairo. Two and two. A deflating and demoralizing inning for the Red Sox who had just taken the lead in the bottom of the fifth. With two out, grounds it foul. And that's been the tone up here in Boston and throughout New England about the fans and the media, everybody falling for this Red Sox team. It's a team that's fun to watch, a team that finished three games out in the AL East, a team that was favored coming into this series. Right now, a team that's down three games to none and trailing in game four, four three in the sixth. Runners will go on a 3 2 delivery from Timlin.
Three two pitch the bases are loaded. Another walk from Timlin. This has been an inning where everything has been just out of the reach of the Red Sox. It started with a chopper off the bat of Bernie Williams. They got this one on the throw to third to get Bernie Williams. This one up the middle kept on the infield two different times. And then off the bat of Tony Clark, Bellhorn knocked it down but could not recover. Now a walk to Cairo brings in Jeter. An invitation for trouble from Timlin walking Cairo to get to the clutch Derek Jeter. Strike one. Only three hits and 14 at bats in this ALCS for Jeter. Oh, and two. And has not done well against Mike Timlin. That hard sinker borne in on Jeter. It's a good combination for Timlin. Bases loaded two out no balls two strikes as this crowd tries to get excited again and Jeter stays up there. I know the managers look at statistics and they look at matchups. But during the course of a game especially in the playoffs. I think part of the game has to be managed or directed looking at the flow of the game and the feel of the game and some of those regular season statistics with a guy like Derek Jeter and Timlin at times may not apply bases loaded two out no balls two strikes on Jeter that's just why ball one Trying to get Jeter to bite on that low outside sinker. Another one oh so close for the Red Sox in this sixth. Bases loaded two out. Jeter grounds to second. Bellhorn hitting over. But not before the Yankees get two and regain the lead. Matsui started it with a one-out triple, and Sturtz is coming in for the Yankees. Ball one down and in as we work now in the bottom of the sixth inning. On the mound is Tanyan Sturtz, and at the plate, Trot Nixon. 4 3 Yankees trying to eliminate Boston tonight. It's 2 0. Nixon is fly to right, line to center. Two balls and a strike. I understand that second guessing is part of the game. It's part of the game with managers, pitchers, pitch selection, hitters, base running, fielding, everything. It's part of baseball. Off the end of the bat, two and two. But in my opinion, if you second guess Terry Francona for bringing in a pitcher that gets a 78 foot ground ball with a man on third and one out, it's unfair and wrong. Timlin pacing in the dugout after giving up the lead and doing it in frustrating fashion for the Red Sox. I'm guessing that ball that Bernie Williams hit went about 78 feet. So Got to be close. 2 2 pitch is high, full count.
Jensen pops it up left side. Jeter, Matsui, and it's Matsui for out number one. So Nixon is gone. Millar will be the hitter. This week's WebMD symptom checker focuses on John Olrud. A bruised left instep. Check your own symptoms with WebMD symptom checker at WebMD.com. One out for Millar. So Olru's not in the game. Tony Clark is, and it's a base hit by Clark with two out in the sixth inning, which has the Yankees on top. That's the way it's gone with the Yankees under Joe Torre. Here's a 1-0. Millar pops it straight up behind home plate. Posada will give it a look. It's out of his reach and out of play. One ball, one strike. Millar tonight has walked and popped up. Orlando Hernandez is in line for the victory. The Yankee bullpen hangs on. Millar takes a good fastball for a strike, 95 miles per hour. Five innings, three runs for El Duque. Three hits, five walks, which hurt him in the fifth. Six strikeouts. Millar, a base hit with one out here in the sixth. We look ahead to tomorrow and remind you, if necessary, game five of this ALCS, the Yankees and the Red Sox. That's at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific. You can assume Pedro Martinez will be on the mound for Boston, taking on Mike Messina. But the Red Sox have to win tonight to make that a reality. And then it's the Cardinals and Astros game five, with that series tied two games apiece. From Houston. It all begins with the all new Dodge Dakota pregame show. Here's Bill Miller. Ball one. Miller one for two with a single and a run scored. The clock is ticking. In more ways than one, you take on this Yankee team, and the obvious is that Joe Torre has Mariano Rivera ready for more than an inning, if need be. The Red Sox needing to get something done in this sixth or in the seventh. They trail by one. Miller grounds foul. Different scoreboard tonight than it was last night. Different numbers up there. These guys out behind that scoreboard are relatively bored. <laughs> it's like a shutout. A couple guys back there nursing pulled hamstrings, I'm sure. <laughs> One and two on Miller. Two and two. Inside the scoreboard, inside the manually operated scoreboard at the base of the Green Monster. Peeking through and hoping to put up a crooked number for the hometown Red Sox. Miller grounds one to short. Cheater, Cairo. The inning is over. A one out hit by Millar. The double play ball follows. We go to the seventh. Yankees up. Back after this from your local Fox station. Joe Torre saying he has seen an extra little spark in the eye of Alex Rodriguez during the playoffs. He has come alive unlike at any other stretch in his first year with the Yankees. He has hit a two run home run tonight one for three in this series now seven out of 17 with two homers five RBIs leading off in the seventh and the counts two and zero. Oh.
3 0. It's Rodriguez, Sheffield, and Matsui. Three and zero, the count from Timlin, and a four-pitch walk. And if you want to talk about Timlin and Folk for a lot, by bringing Timlin in in the sixth inning, Keith Folk is getting loose in the seventh. Here's Gary Sheffield. I think your point about Mariano Rivera coming in in the eighth and perhaps working two innings tonight is one of the reasons that Terry Francona is treating the seventh inning like the ninth inning. And against the heart of the Yankee lineup. That's the third walk from Timlin since coming in last inning. And if these throw overs are called from the bench, Al Leiter, they're obviously trying to buy more time for Folk to get ready out in the bullpen. Well, you also have a ground ball pitcher in Timlin, and he's always one pitch away. Anytime you have a sinker ball pitcher, you're one pitch away from winding up again here, in this case, with nobody on two outs. With the matchup of the way Timlin can bore sinkers in on the righties, these right handed hitters, particularly A Rod, Sheffield, Jeter, you got to bust them in on the hands. As quick as Sheffield is and spinning on a fastball, you can still get it in on him. That is five straight that have missed from Timlin. And now Baratek's going to go out and talk. Trying to get Folk ready to come in here in the seventh inning. So a leadoff walk. Sheffield is 0 for 3 tonight. Came in with a 692 average against Red Sox pitching in this ALCS. He's flying to right, struck out, grounded out. That ties up Sheffield, 93 miles per hour from Timlin. One ball, one strike. The sinker in on his hands, you see it just ties him up. Gary's as good as any hitter in baseball to pull his hands in, and he never shortens his swing. Not close, two balls and a strike. It's only a one run lead for the Yankees. But you get the feeling this crowd feels like it's a much bigger lead for New York. Three games to none up by a run here in the seventh Sheffield reaching for it two and two. Well the Red Sox just cannot allow the Yankees to score again. They only have three outs with which to work against Tanyan Sturts or others from the bullpen before they have to cope with Mariana Rivera. Tim a check on Rodriguez and a throw over. Well what a dominating presence Rivera is out there. The Red Sox don't have that type presence and Keith Folk. Everything spins around that right hander in the last two innings of a ball game. And that right hander with a save in game one and a save in game two. Not needed last night, so Rivera has had rest and hasn't worked since Wednesday as we play here on a Sunday night. Two balls, two strikes, one on, nobody out. And a pop up behind the plate. Veritek has a play. One on, one out. Top of the hour, 11 o'clock straight up 
here at Fenway Park. Along with our producer Pete Machesca, our director Bill Webb. Joe Buck, Al Leiter, Tim McCarver with you, and our game summary is brought to you by Nissan. Hernandez went five, allowed only three hits, but three runs. Low, five and a third, relieved by Timlin. Matsui, more extra base hits tonight. And Mike Timlin was surprised to see Francona come get him. Keith Folk, the closer for the Red Sox, is coming on here in the seventh. Mike Timlin is in the dugout watching and the presence of Hideki Matsui with one on one out the Yankees already up by a run in this game up three games to none brings Keith Folk the closer into the game in the seventh runner at first one out Tim even though I know you touched on it a moment ago I think it's worth trying to explain again why you believe Terry Francona is bringing Folk out of the bullpen right here. Yeah, I think he considers this the ninth inning because they have three shots at Tanyan Sturts or the other part of the Yankee bullpen. Coupled with the fact that Terry told us before the game that I'm going to use Timlin and Folk a lot. You disagree with it, but that's what he told us and that's what he's doing. Timlin lasted only one inning. As the count goes to 2 0 on Matsui. He allowed one run. He's on the hook right now. Three hits. He walked three. Derek Lowe, the starter, got into the sixth, was yanked after a one out triple by Matsui. And Hideki Matsui is sitting on a 2 0 pitch. 2 and 1. Matsui has an opportunity here to make sure his name is on that MVP trophy in this ALCS if he can come through for the Yankees. Drove in five runs in game one. Last night was five for six with five RBIs, two doubles, two homers, and tonight a triple and a double. I know. You can hear Rodriguez grunt. And exhale as he got back to the bag. Deadly quiet is Fenway Park. A 2 1. Matsui grounds to Millar. He tags Matsui for the out. Down to second is Rodriguez. Two out. And Bernie Williams will be the hitter. If you want to talk stats, the last 14 appearances for Folk against the Yankees, regular season and postseason, he's three and one, five for five in save chances against New York, with an ERA of 1.06 and no home runs allowed in his last 14 appearances. The Red Sox need him to keep it 4-3 in the seventh. Takes a strike. The Red Sox in the bottom of the seventh will have the nine, one, and two hitters Bellhorn, Damon, and Cabrera. Anybody gets on, Manny Ramirez. Fouls it back here and literally right into my lap. <laughs> Joe doing the smart thing in front of the Fenway faithful. Absolutely. Throwing the ball back, of course. <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah, I said my lap, but it was kind of in between the two of us. I said a glove. No balls, two strikes on Bernie Williams. Runner at second, two out. 
Folk trying to close the door on the seven. Just missed. Ball one. Fastball inside. A little down. Veritek doing all he could to try to pull it back in. Bernie Williams trying to add to the Yankee lead. Just got a piece. That's a ball that Folk wanted Williams to put in play and not foul back. You make that good a pitch with that much deception, you want the hitter to put it in play. Good job by Williams to foul it back. Can only watch with one eye open. Runner at second, two out. Williams leans back from ball two. Bernie again, the forgotten guy with his group, the heart of this order. Hitting 389 in this LCS and out to talk is Veritek. Bullpen quiet for Boston. Bullpen quiet for the Yankees. A leadoff walk. Sheffield fouled out. Folk came in. Matsui grounded out. Now a 2-2 to Williams. Off the fists and back and out of play. Posada. It's a good at bat for Bernie making Falk work. There's a closer who's gone two innings seven times this year. Not more than two all year. Pitching in the seventh. This game has come to a standstill as Williams steps out. His sequence prior to those three fastballs in a row was a changeup, fastball, changeup, fastball. Set up for a changeup. And Bernie Williams just got a piece of that changeup. Still three and two. And again, Veritek wants to make sure as he goes out to talk. Second two out. Bernie Williams strikes out. And it's still 4 3 New York. Got him on a high hard one up and in. Folk comes in and shuts the door on the seventh, and we will stay here at Fenway Park. Joe D. Messina will perform God Bless America before the Red Sox bat and the Red Sox faithful hoping. They can get something done against this Yankee bullpen. Sturts faced only three in the sixth inning. Gordon is getting loose with ball one inside to Bellhorn. Two and oh. Bellhorn, even with all those strikeouts during the regular season, hit 264. One out of 13 in this series, trying to scratch his way on. Two and one. Top of the order will follow Johnny Damon and then Cabrera with Manny Ramirez due up fourth in this seventh. Three and one. 
no Yankee pitcher has taken the mound with the Yankees trailing in this series. They've only trailed two half innings. And the Yankees either tied it or went ahead in the next half inning. Bellhorn full count. That shot of Tom Gordon, it's like everything has moved up for the Yankees. Gordon doesn't come in, in the seventh that often. Usually it's the eighth, but tonight he may pitch in the seventh if Sturge gets in trouble and Re Rivera in the eighth inning. Struck him out on the inside corner, Bellhorn. Another strikeout, and he's booed on his way back to the dugout after getting rung up on this pitch. First strikeout for Sturtz, and now Johnny Damon. That pitch could have gone either way. That was a very close pitch. And the Yankees once again got the call. They're getting the hits and the calls against the Red Sox. And a lot of the breaks on choppers and yep. balls just out of the reach of fielders. Damon grounds back to Sturtz, and Johnny Damon just can't get it together. 0 for 4 tonight, 1 out of 17 in this series. Tomorrow, ALCS Game 5, if necessary. Yankees and Red Sox, Pedro and Messina. Followed by NLCS Game 5, Cardinals and Astros. It all begins tomorrow at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific, with the all-new Dodge Dakota pregame show. And in Game 5 in Houston, Brandon Backey against Woody Williams, a Houston native. The starter and winner in Game 1. That series tied two games apiece. Here is Cabrera in a very important at bat. Two out. Nothing going on right now for the Red Sox, but instant rally is on deck in Manny Ramirez. A 1 0. Cabrera into right center field. That ball, Bernie Williams with a sliding catch to end the inning. That sends this game into the eighth. It's game four. Yankees up three games to none. And tonight, leading 4-3. You get the feeling someday that weighted ball that Mariano Rivera uses to get his arm loose before he starts to toss will end up in Cooperstown. We're into the eighth inning of game four and Posada deals with the Red Sox closer Keith Folk. Ball one low and away. I don't know if the weighted ball will but it's holder will. Mariano Rivera is getting loose. As game four is in the eighth inning. And again with that piece of the puzzle coming together. It makes it all the more understandable part of Terry Francona to treat the last two innings like it's the eighth and ninth rather than the sixth and seventh because Rivera was available and is available for two innings tonight two and one on Posada here's a two one two and two. Posada drew a walk after the pitching change with Timlin in the game in the sixth and he scored the go ahead run on the two out RBI infield hit by Tony Clark. The 2 2 full count. Lead off walk. Let's go down to Chris Myers. Joe, the uh, the chill in the air, and not just what Red Sox fans are feeling. The temperature has dipped into the low 40s down on the field. I, I noticed when the Red Sox were batting, a number of their players were going back into the tunnel, getting near the heater. In fact, Kurt Schilling was really one of the few Red Sox players that was vocal and, and, and cheering. And uh, meanwhile, on the Yankee bench, A. Rod Jeter, very vocal, very attentive. Uh, maybe the difference between 3-0 and 0-3, or the difference between being a Yankee or a Red Sox. 
Here is Ruben Sierra. Right now, 42 degrees. Sierra rounds one to second. Bellhorn, one out. The return thrown out in time. Four six on the force out. Bellhorn to Cabrera. If a double plays a pitcher's best friend, what's the fielder's choice? An acquaintance? In this case. A good friend, a distant friend. <laughs> Somebody you see once in a while. One on, one out for Tony Clark. Two for three tonight, making his first start of the postseason in place of the injured John Olroot. Yankees led 2 0 in the third and a home run by Alex Rodriguez. The Red Sox went out in front with three in the fifth and led for 16 minutes. They've led in this ALCS for a total of 23 minutes. The Yankees came back with two in the sixth. And they still lead it 4 3 in the eighth. One ball, no strikes on Clark. Side corner one and one. Reason Mariano Rivera is getting loose, not only does he have the extra rest, but the save might come in the bottom of this eighth inning. With Manny Ramirez, David Ortiz, and Jason Veritek coming up. The three, four, and five hitters for Boston in what is right now a one run game. Two and one on Clark. Falk is looking for Clark to roll over on one of those split fingers. Looking for his best friend. Falk took over in the seventh, working in the eighth. That's high, and it's three and one. Cairo, the number nine hitter, is next. Clark looking to drive something on three and one. Full count. It's a high fastball. Same pitch. The umpire called the ball the previous pitch. The three two delivery. Two out. So important for Folk to come back after falling behind three and one. Now it's Cairo with two out. And if Folk could get Cairo, you can leave Jeter for the next inning. Just elevated again on the high fastball. It's hard to lay off, especially as often as Falk throws his split finger to the lefties. High fastball, split in the dirt. Difficult for Clark to lay off that. Here's Cairo. Strike one. Posada walked to start the inning. Sierra reached on a force out at second. Clark struck out. And Cairo, who is two for 11 in this series, is at the plate. Blocked by Veritek. Talk about no teams coming back to win a best of seven game series down three games to none in baseball postseason history. Only two teams have forced as many as six games. Ninety eight Braves the ninety nine Mets. Foul 
across way in front of the plate two and one. Twenty of the twenty five times the team's been down three games to none they've been swept. The Yankees in search of their 40th pennant. Cairo pops it up down the right side. Long run for Nixon and he's out of room. Two and two. Hard game to figure out. Last night the balls were pounded off the wall and Guys, your arms are tired and swinging so much. And today, if it holds up, potentially the winning run was a ball that was 78 feet, did you say, Tim? <laughs> Couldn't black in your eye? About that. Crowd comes alive on a 2 2 count with Cairo at the plate. Cabrera. That'll send this game into the bottom of the eighth. Heart of the order coming up for the Red. Mariano Rivera. Faced four batters in the eighth. Pitched around a leadoff hit by Ramirez and will work to the bottom of the order here in the ninth trying to finish off a sweep. The Red Sox have led for 23 minutes in this series. Seven minutes last night, 16 minutes tonight. The Red Sox have won seven of their last nine when facing elimination. They face elimination here tonight. And the Yankees 17 and seven when they can clinch under Joe Torrey. Torrey trying to go seven and zero in ALCS play. And you look at the numbers for Rivera since 2001. He's blown seven save opportunities against the Red Sox. But the Red Sox trying to get him in the postseason. Rivera looking for his 33rd postseason save. Here we go. Millar, ball one. Just turned midnight here at Fenway Park. Twelve hours ago, JB was welcoming an NFL television audience out in Foxborough. Twelve hours later, the Red Sox are three outs away from being swept. Inside, two and one. Rivera staying in on Millar with his cutter, just making sure that he's inner third off the plate. He missed with the one, and Millar was out in front. It's three and one. Mariana Rivera in the postseason, six for six, and save chances against Boston. Now Mariano's strength is his cutter, and his cutter runs down and away. It runs away from the right-hander and into the lefty. This matchup of him pounding Millar inside, he does it well, of course, but it's not as good as him throwing his cutter on the outer half and letting it ride. A pinch runner, Dave Roberts, is going to come in for Boston. 
he can run picked up from the Dodgers. Bill Miller is at the plate on the 24th of July with Miller at the plate and Rivera on the mound. This won it for Boston. That bench clearing brawl. A long day of baseball and a celebration. What can Miller do now against Rivera? Roberts with a huge lead draws a throw. Very fast Roberts. With the Red Sox try and steal a base. Miller has a hit tonight. And twice. He's bounced out. That was close. He's gone. He certainly got a lead big enough to go. Mariano doing exactly what a pitcher has to do with a good base runner. Vary your times, hold the ball, quicken your stride once in a while, just to offset the timing and tempo of the base runner. Miller still waiting for his first pitch. Roberts is going. Posada's throw. Roberts safe. Roberts had a great jump. It was a good ball for Posada to throw on. Good call. Roberts was 38 for 41 in stolen bases. Nearly perfect. Now Miller will try to get him at least over to third base. Showing bunt. Taking strike one. Two seldom used bench players could have key roles for Terry Francona here in the ninth inning. Roberts, a pinch runner stealing second. And Minkiewicz, who was picked up from the Twins right now in the on-deck circle with Bellhorn spot due up next. This season hanging on a bunt here. will come to the plate. The throw by Williams. Bill Miller has tied it. wasn't bunting got a cutter out over the plate I don't know whether Mariano thought maybe he was bunting that was a middle middle cutter the legs of Dave Roberts flying to the plate and in his back pocket the tying run The first save chance blown by Rivera against the Red Sox in the postseason. Still nobody out. And Menkevich is the hitter. Now how will the Red Sox play it with Miller 
The winning run at first and nobody out. Yankees expect a bunt. And the bunt to Rivera. Jax Miller gets the out, and the Red Sox could be a hit away from forcing game five. Benkiewicz does his job. The man who has struggled this entire series at coming up with hits, getting on base, starting trouble, thanks to this bunt by Mitkevich. Rivera thought about it, got the out at first. It's Johnny Damon with only one hit in this ALCS, a chance to win it. side Clark bobbles it first and third one out so cutter in on Damon's hand it had kind of backspin to it side spin See it spinning almost like a cue ball. It's an error on Clark to put the winning run 90 feet away. And Orlando Cabrera, who has an RBI single and a run scored tonight, will bat with the infield in. Nomar's replacement at the plate. Trying to help the Red Sox live on in this ALCS. The infield is in. And Tim, just like the 2001 World Series, a lot of room between the infielders and the outfield. They're in, but there's a lot of green out there. For Cabrera. Infield in, outfield in. 0 oh and 2. Rivera in. Side. And Cabrera is so anxious. Swinging at a pitch that was unhittable and way out of the strike zone. Look for Rivera to go back up and in. Or at least up. Three pitches and a strikeout when Rivera needed it. The first pitch was the best pitch for Cabrera to hit. It was down in the strike zone. But then Rivera could smell it. It's Manny Ramirez coming up. A man who drove home 130 runs during the regular season. And a guy who doesn't have one RBI in this ALCS. With a chance to win it for Boston. Of the two, Ortiz is easier to pitch to for Rivera but if you put Ramirez on you load the bases and the margin for error is much less first and third two out ball one and they let Damon take second which is no small play on a ball hit up the middle that force out isn't there at second base if a shortstop the second baseman has to dive for it. The winning run is at third. Manny Ramirez takes ball two.
Rivera's had a hit off Rivera's last time up. And those first two pitches out of the strike zone. It looks as though Rivera wants to pitch to Ortiz. Rivera is two for his last two against Rivera. Ortiz 0 oh for his last two. It's 3 and 0. Oh. Alan Embry is getting loose for the Red Sox in their bullpen in case this game goes to the 10th. A strike on three and zero, oh, and Ramirez was up there to take. like a ball inside right on the hands of Manny Ramirez keep in mind that in the past Posada has had problems catching Rivera cleanly still full It looked like Rivera was willing to pitch around Manny Ramirez. He's come right after him. is loaded for David Ortiz two walks a hit and an error in the inning David Ortiz faced Rivera with one on and nobody on the eighth. Rivera just went right at him, stayed hard inside. That was about probably the best pitch down wise. Chased him upstairs, and then he ended up check swinging with a high cutter. Just couldn't hold off. The cut fastball, looking as though it's a middle inner half, ends up being on the left hander's hands. Yeah, so there's, no, there's no setting Ortiz up right here. You go right to his weakness, up and in. Ortiz could win it for Boston. That's foul. Thirty eighth pitch of the night for Rivera coming right here. Two. Up and in. Up.
Ortiz is jammed. He pops it up, and Cairo waits for it. Into the 10th inning. The Red Sox rally. Had a chance to win it. Get the one run and tie it at four. Game four. 10th inning rolls in. And so does Alan Embry out of the bullpen for the Red Sox. It's the 10th inning now and a few changes for the Red Sox Mariano Rivera in the dugout he may, he may be finished with Gordon getting loose in the bullpen but Kavich stays in the game he's at first base he's in the number nine spot Pokey Reese takes over at second base he's batting seventh and Alan Embry the left hander who worked last night and in two thirds of an inning allowed two runs on three hits is on the mound after Keith Folk did a fantastic job two and two thirds no runs no hits two walks three strikeouts he kept it close and the Red Sox got a run in the bottom of the ninth inning to tie it this game is four hours old. Here's Bernie Williams first up. A four hour 20 minute game last night. Four hour 20 minutes and now tonight four hours. And it's been fun. First pitch a strike to Bernie Williams. Posada will follow and then the DH Sierra. Williams thought it was outside. That ball is right in the slot. Joe Torre talking about Ortiz from Rivera the other night in the box. That ball was in the box, low and away. No balls, two strikes from Embry. Too far inside. You can see Veritek setting up up. The pitch missed down. Embry's just basically coming at you. He's got a very good fastball, and he can get to the curveball. You see, he bounces in dirt. You see, he elevate and down the dirt with the break ball. Two balls, two strikes. So Rivera seated in the dugout. Gordon getting loose in the Yankee bullpen. Two balls, two strikes on Bernie Williams. You wonder if the Yankees were to grab the lead again here in the 10th inning. And it was a save opportunity or a chance to save the game as opposed to taking the field in the bottom of the 10th inning in a tie game. That would influence the decision on the part of Joe Torre. A ton of rest for Rivera. We'll wait and see. Here's a 2 2. And Bernie Williams is just trying to hang in there. That's an interesting point and an interesting situation that Rivera would put in if that were the case. After blowing a save. Trying to save your own win. Well, I think the question is, is he available if the Red Sox were to win with two innings of 40 pitches? Is he available tomorrow? Here's a 2-2 to Williams leading off, and he shoots one into right field. Nixon stops it one up. Jorge Posada digs in. Leaving the manager's offices this afternoon about seven hours ago, Terry Francona bid us adieu saying, see you tomorrow. Joe Torre said, see you next Saturday. <laughs> yeah.
Yankees trying to end this ALCS right now. The Red Sox trying to force game five. And hand the ball to Pedro Martinez here at Fenway tomorrow in the late afternoon. With one out, Posada takes the ball. Posada's been on base three times tonight. A single, a pair of walks, a run scored. In the air to center, Damon. Two out. In the bottom of the tenth, the Red Sox will have Veritek, Nixon, and Reese. Here comes Sierra. One of the interesting things in facing a pitcher like Embry in extra innings, if you're a Yankee hitter, you realize that he, he doesn't want to get beat on anything less than his best, and his best is a fastball. Consequently, he's come in, he's thrown seven straight fastballs. So if you're Rivera, you have to look for a fastball. With two out, nobody on. Sierra takes a ball low. Pitchers properly don't want to get beat on something other than their best in extra innings. And Embry's breaking ball is very flat. Somewhere Mark Wohler's just turned off his TV. Here comes a 1-0 pitch. Fastball for a strike on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Way back in 1996 when Mark Wohler's throw Jim Laritz, threw Jim Laritz a slider after myriad fastballs. And Laritz had fouled back. And Laritz tied it for the Yankees, a game that they would go on to win at Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta. Go 1-1. One, one. Strike two. Season home run this year. Fights it off. Bad pop up, Reese going out, long run, circles it, can't make the play. Sierra has a two out single. And Pokey Reese did all he could. What a good effort going after that pop up. Or just flying into shallow center field. And the ball just eluding him. It's Tony Clark. Two out of four with an RBI. He drove in the last Yankee run in the sixth. Committed an error. Clark did in the bottom of the ninth, but it did not cost the Yankees. It did, however, make Mariano Rivera work harder to get the three outs and keep it a tie game as Clark takes the ball. Tom Gordon had cooled off. He'll start to crank it up again. That's low 2-0. Oh. 
On deck is Cairo. After Embry in the Red Sox bullpen, they are thin, thin, thin. Two and one. They have Mendoza. They have Liz Canick. They have Mike Myers. Mendoza and Les Canick, two guys who struggled here last night in game three. Two balls and a strike on Tony Clark. Should play in center for Damon. The Red Sox ought to come firing off that field with a chance to win it in the bottom of the 10th. It's a 4-4 game in game number four. Gordon coming in back after this from your local Fox station. In-depth election coverage on KTVU Channel 2 News. Jason Veritek first up for Boston. They face the former Boston reliever, Tom Gordon. His first year with the Yankees. Strike one on Veritek, who's 0 for 4 with three strike rats, strikeouts tonight. Two home runs in this series, and 18 on the season. Line drive caught by Jeter. One out. Best ball that Jason Veritek has hit all night. And Jeter makes a rather routine play. Here's Trot Nixon. Nixon grounded out against Rivera. In the eighth inning with a tying run at second. Now against Gordon, he takes a strike. Gordon was last with Boston in 1999. Saved 11 games, was injured in 2000, and then made his way back with the Cubs in 2001 and 2 time in Houston for the White Sox last year had a terrific regular season for Joe Torre out of his bullpen setting up Rivera to the right side Cairo two out and Pokey Reese will have his first at bat of this series. I think your point last inning, Joe, was well taken. The longer this game goes, the more the game favors the Yankees. Because of the lack of depth in the Red Sox bullpen. Strike one on Reese. Listening to this crowd chant Pokey as he's in the hole 0 2. He's chasing a high fastball. Reese trying to get on to bring up Miller. Who had the only hit in the ninth inning against Rivera, but it was a game tying hit. Ball one. On the inside. 
side corner and the 10th inning is over. We go to the 11th, game number four. Get up now! Get up and get it! Eleventh inning now of game four. And we give a recap of better than four hours of baseball. Back in the third inning, Alex Rodriguez hit a two-run home run to put New York out in front. The Red Sox came back in the bottom of the fifth, capped on a two-out, two-run single by Ortiz. But that lead didn't last past the sixth inning. Here's how the Yankees tied it. And they went up on this. Infield base hit. Bellhorn couldn't handle. But in the ninth inning against Rivera, a stolen base by a pinch runner Roberts. And a base hit up the middle by Miller tied it. And now in the 11th inning, first pitch is a strike to Miguel Cairo. Cairo, Jeter, and Rodriguez. What happened later in that ninth inning, though, an error by Clark presented first and third one out for the Red Sox. Cabrera struck out. Ramirez walked and Ortiz popped up with the bases loaded. One ball, one strike on Cairo. Miguel 0 for 2 tonight with a walk and a sacrifice. 2 for 12 in this series. Myers and Les Canning getting loose. Strike two. Four hours, 20 minutes last night, and we will beat that tonight. The one, two. Cairo in his first year with the Yankees took over the second base position for Joe Torre down the stretch. He's been there every day in the postseason. He waits for a one two from Alan Embry. And he starts the inning with a base hit. Nixon cuts it off before it gets into that corner and the first hit of the night by Cairo starts the 11th. Nothing but fastballs from Embry in the inning plus. And Cairo takes advantage of it with a line drive down the right field line. And most every one of his fastballs are away. Now Jeter's up. Go ahead run it first with nobody out and Miller way in at third. Jeter with 16 sacrifices on the year. Look for him to bunt right here. He showed it as Embry threw over to first. Had at least one man on at 32 of the 36 innings. Bunts. Embry makes the play. Out. Down to second is Cairo. One away. Jeter, along with everything else, among the better bunters in the American League, lays down a blueprint. Embry with the sure out. That brings up Alex Rodriguez. Les Canick and Myers in the bullpen. But Alan Embry, it appears, will stay out there and face Rodriguez.
Rodriguez only hit tonight the two run homer in the third. Strike one. Would seem to me that Terry Francona's thinking right now is to get Rodriguez out, then walk Sheffield and bring Myers in to pitch to Matsui. No balls, one strike on Rodriguez. That way, that way. Pokey Reese close to the bag as the Red Sox try to keep Cairo as close as they can. These fans here at Fenway wondering if that ninth inning rally against Rivera is a tease or if it will lead to a game four victory in a game five tomorrow evening. I don't think it's going to be a very productive work day tomorrow across Boston. A lot of people staying up late. 12:45 on the stadium clock. The 0-1. Rodriguez. Cabrera makes a diving catch. Two out. Cheating toward the hole was Orlando Cabrera and diving to make the play. And definitely into the leather before it hit the grass. What a play by Orlando Cabrera. Now two out, and Dave Wallace is out to talk. You've got Sheffield up now. Matsui to follow. I think Dave Wallace probably gave Alan Embry. The opportunity to choose either Sheffield or Matsui. Matsui does have a hit in this series against she against Embry. He also has a two-run homer against Myers that he hit last night. Mm -hmm. Ball one inside. Tonight Sheffield is hitless. But this tells you all you need to know about the respect the Red Sox have for Hideki Matsui. Lefty righty matchup. Sheffield trying to put the Yankees back on top. 2 and 0. Oh. First breaking ball from Embry in this game. There are very few left handed hitters in baseball who would be shown this kind of respect that Matsui's being shown. That just missed the inside corner 3 0. Oh. And how daring do the Red Sox want to be with Gary Sheffield? I think you put him on right now. I don't think you take any more chances. And the Red Sox will with a count. Of 3 0 intentionally pass Sheffield to bring up Matsui. And that will be it for Embry. Matsui is coming up. Mike Myers is coming out of the bullpen. Two on, two out. Tie game, 11th inning. Game four.
Alan Embry leaves with runners on at first and second and two out in the eleventh inning. And Mike Myers who started the season with Seattle was acquired on the 6th of August by the Red Sox will throw the most important pitches of his career. Pitching to try to keep the Red Sox in this game and in turn in this series. It's Hideki Matsui. Two more extra base hits tonight with a double a triple a run scored. Last night he took Myers deep. Runners on at first and second two out. Ball one inside. You mentioned it last night Al that Myers was extended. Pitching more than he's used to pitching with two full innings allowing two runs on six hits. Well this is a specialty role for Myers. Throws a lot of breaking balls from down under. And he's two and oh the first two not close to Matsui. And he's going to stay right there obviously on the plate but something slow running down and away from Matsui. Eleven out of twenty in this series is Matsui. And it's three and oh. Bernie Williams on deck. And Les Canning just got up and is starting to get loose again for the Red Sox. Those weren't close. A four pitch walk to load the bases. And that's it for Myers. So Curtis Les Canick. Who lasted only a third of an inning last night allowing three runs on a couple of hits. Will come in with a bases loaded two out in a 4 4 game in the 11th. Polite society tells us that it's rude to stare. But then along came the 2005 V6 Nissan. Curtis Leskanik says he is ready to go. Last night. He came on and could not get through an inning. He gave up a three run shot to Gary Sheffield. That unlocked it, and the Yankees were off and running from that point on. Tonight, Les Cannon comes on with a bases loaded, two out, a 4 4 game in the 11th inning with the Yankees up three games to none. And Bernie Williams. Is at the plate for New York. Strike one. Very important pitch. First pitch with the bases loaded, the slider right across the heart of the plate. The all time leader in LCS hits and RBIs at the plate. Wakefield getting loose. Williams flies it into shallow center field. Johnny Damon comes on, and this game's still tied. The Yankees leave the bases loaded. Les Canick does his job, and the Red Sox will bat the bottom of the 11th with a chance to extend this series. Keep the faith. That's what the Red Sox and their fans are trying to do. They tied this game in the bottom of the ninth inning against postseason's best closer ever, Mariano Rivera. And it was a huge hit by Bill Miller that did it. And Bill Miller will lead off for the Red Sox here in the 11th. Historic Fenway Park. And yet another battle between these two teams the Yankees and the Red Sox. Will there be a game five tomorrow late afternoon.
Bill Miller two for four tonight facing Gordon. Ball one. Benkevich on deck. Ball two. Two and one. Good pitch by Gordon on the outside corner. Miller looking inside. Gordon right across the outside corner. The two one. Miller up on the count three and one. home runs during the regular season his base hit in the ninth inning off Rivera was his first RBI of this postseason that pitch from R Rivera to Miller was down in the strike zone Bill a much better low ball hitter from the left side now it's Gordon with a count full to the right side and foul Tony Clark right on the line. Almost straddling the line. It's one. Sixteen hours away if there's a game five. Pedro Martinez, Mike Messina. Miller trying to get it started for the Red Sox. Pops it in the air to left, and Matsui is there. One out. Now it's Doug Minkavich. Tim, you and I had a chance to visit with Minkavich prior to game three, and he was talking about this role that he's in. He's basically a guy who comes in with a closer for the Red Sox Keith Folk a guy who has turned into a defensive replacement in the late innings for Boston somebody who starred for the twins the last couple of years and he lines one caught by Tony Clark he had already dropped down an important bunt and now he lines out for the second out at the bottom of the 11 one thing the benefit of guarding the line in late innings one of the benefits with a 6 8 first baseman is that you can make a play like that. That was a foul ball. Nicely done by Tony Clark. Now it's Johnny Damon. Ball one low. Tim Wakefield is getting loose for the Red Sox in their bullpen. He worked in last night's game. Was originally supposed to start tonight's game. He pitched three and a third innings in game three. There's a strike on the outside part from Gordon. One and one on Damon. One one. Two and one. We had talked to Terry Francona a couple of days ago. They said I have to be careful with Wakefield. He's not the kind of guy at this stage in his career, even throwing the knuckleball that you want to throw him, let's say in back to back games. Well, Francona doesn't have a choice. Damon sticks the bat out and pokes it foul. Two and two. 
Well, even though the knuckleball comes in at a slower velocity, you still have to throw it. And that's still using your shoulder and rotator cuff muscles and everything involved. Damon still looking for his first hit of the night. Full count with Cabrera next. Two pitch, a two out walk. Damon is a threat to steal. Cabrera coming to the plate. If you're a guy like Cabrera, you want to take a pitch or two to give Damon a chance to steal, but Damon's got to cooperate by running early in the count. Cabrera, not the type of guy who can, who's a real gap hitter. And that's what it would take to score Damon unless he steals second base. Damon does not have a stolen base in this ALCS. He stole three in the division series. And no thoughts on taking early. Strike one on Cabrera. Cabrera had a chance in the ninth inning against Mariano Rivera. With runners on at the corners and only one out, and it took three pitches for Rivera to strike out Cabrera. He was anxious in that at bat, and he was anxious on that first swing. on Damon one hit one RBI tonight for Orlando Cabrera he's also scored a run up in the number two spot for the first time in this series made a good defensive play a diving catch in the line drive by Rodriguez last inning Ow. Posada does not make a throw. The count's one and one on Cabrera, who can now win it with a hit. I don't think Posada had a hold of the ball, and sometimes it looked like the ball kind of slipped out of his hand. Damon steals it without a throw. Can Cabrera come up? For the Red Sox here and end game four. Two balls and a strike with Manny Ramirez on deck. 62 RBIs on the season for Cabrera between Montreal and Boston. Seven this postseason for the Red Sox. Yesterday's ball game, we were talking about Gary Sheffield playing shallow with Orlando Cabrera batting. Well, Cabrera burned Gary, hit a ball over his head. That was with the bases loaded. Millar went back to tag up. Well, Sheffield really should be in about five steps right now in right field, but he's respecting the power he showed yesterday. A high bouncer to Jeter. Out at first, and this game lives on to the 12th. Another runner left on. That's 10 on the night for the Red Sox. And we can go to the 12th.
Curtis Leskanik who got out of the 11th inning with a great piece of work coming in with the bases loaded two out to get Bernie Williams will start the 12th inning. It'll be Posada Sierra and Tony Clark for the Yankees. It's a 4 4 game 12th inning. Game four with the Red Sox facing elimination. Jorge Posada first up. Has a hit in two walks tonight and Liz Canick misses with ball one. So even with Wakefield getting loose while the Red Sox were batting in the 11th. It's Les Canick back out there and Quantrill gets loose. Broken bat pop up shallow right field and it's a base hit. Posada starts the 12th with a hit. Derek Jeter sacrificing last inning after Cairo started the inning with a hit. I don't think you're going to see a sacrifice out of Ruben Sierra. That's who's coming to the plate. Ruben is two out of five tonight. Let's see how the Yankees want to play it. Miller's not even in at third, so the Red Sox don't expect a bunt. And ball one misses down and away. In the bottom of the 12th, the Red Sox will have Ramirez, Ortiz, and Veritek. A strike is into Rivera, or rather Sierra. Ruben Sierra with a pair of singles. Four hits and 11 at bats in this series against Boston pitching. Just missed two and one. Tony Clark on deck. A two one off Liz Canning knocks it down gets the out at first and like a bunt. The lead runner Posada goes down to second but that was a painful like a bunt for Les Canick. <laughs> Looks like it hit him on the outside of the right thigh. It's one thing the Red Sox cannot afford is to have any pitcher go down on them. Looked like it caught him on the back of the right leg then the back of the left leg and it sat right there Les Canick turned it into an out and the go ahead run is at second with one out for Tony Clark Terry Francona has got to be saying Kurt you can't be hurt <laughs> a Wakefield is still getting loose for Boston in their bullpen Les Canick is going to try it see if he can continue says he's fine. Quantrill will face the heart of the lineup for the Boston Red Sox. How important is it for Boston to keep it a 4-4 game? It's up to Les Canick and right now Tony Clark. Runner at second one out and Clark pops it in the air to left Ramirez two out and now it's Miguel Cairo standing in the way of Curtis Leskanik trying to get this game into the bottom of the 12th at 4 4 one of the reasons that relief pitchers have such an advantage over guys who have started the game is they're strong Leskanik only in a second inning of work. 
and guys like Cairo and Tony Clark and Posada and Jeter and Rodriguez started the game. Shattered bat. Strike one on Cairo. Posada is the runner at second. And Cairo has to go get a new piece of lumber as the outfield for the Boston Red Sox sizing up what's out in front of them. A base hit their way. That'll be Posada trying to score the go ahead run coming around third. It's Cairo now, Jeter on deck. Head of Miguel Cairo, one and one. How did that ball miss Cairo? And how did Veritek catch it? Talk about being tired at the end of a long season, a long night, over four and a half hours, able to reach up and grab it. And now the one one on the inside corner, strike two. Got a gift there. Cairo set up at a ball and two strikes. Les Kinnick with an inning and a third scoreless relief. Bottom of the 12th, part of the order. Quantrill coming in. Back after this from your local Fox station. Watch an early edition of the KTVU Channel 2 News tomorrow at 4. The temperature continues to fall here in Boston as we move to the bottom of the 12th, the 4-4 game. And Paul Quantrill is the fifth pitcher of the night for New York. The opportunity won't be any better than it is right now for the Red Sox. Ramirez, Ortiz, and Veritek, if anybody gets on Nixon... Trying to force a game five tomorrow. Strike one on the inside corner. Game five would start just after five local time later today. This tie is the longest game in ALCS history. One ball, one strike. Mike Timlin like a middle linebacker trying to get the crowd into it. Hey! Ramirez with a hit and three walks tonight. Two balls and a strike. Quantrill had such a good first half of the season. Ran out of gas down the stretch. 1910 Cubs, the only team in postseason history down three games to none to win game four in extra innings. The 2 1. Ramirez will start it with a hit. And the Red Sox put their leadoff man on for the first time since the ninth inning when they tied it against Rivera. It is awfully tough to throw Manny Ramirez anything in the strike zone. Anything that he can reach. Usually a line drive on the end of it. Now it's David Ortiz. Two out against Rivera in the ninth. On the 
the inside corner a ball and a strike. Posada, two and one. Nice play by Posada, backhanding that fastball that actually hit in front of the plate. Good play. Ortiz in the deep right field. Back is Sheffield. We'll see you later tonight. two-minute game and worth every second of it for the Boston Red Sox and these fans who stayed here at Fenway Park let's go down to Chris Myers uh, all right, Joe, the Red Sox fans that hung around saw David Ortiz blast up. First of all, congratulations. Talk about the pitch you hit. It was a uh, fastball coming back to the play. Very uh, much every time I face him, that's the pitch that he always get me out with. You know, he got a lot of movement. In. We're trying to, to look him for early. We appreciate you, and so does the audience. The talk does. You're out of breath, obviously, from circling the bases and your teammates mobbing you. What was that like? Man, you know, we were begging for winning the game, and, and uh, finally we we win this one. I hope we come back with the same attitude tomorrow and, and keep winning because that's what this series is all about. It's actually today, you know, you played that long here. We were already on hit Monday. Uh, well, we, we're still in the house, you know. We we are we still playing here in Boston, getting a lot of support from the fans. And that's all, that's all we care about right now. Okay, thanks a lot, David Ortiz. Let's go back up to Joe Buck. All right, Chris, thank you. We talked about the opportunity for huge outs picked up by Les Canick, a leadoff hit by Ramirez, and David Ortiz sends everybody home just over five hours after it began. The Yankees had been pitching him inside all night. He finally connected. A guy who won the division series against the Anaheim Angels wins this game here tonight. He took that one the opposite way over the Green Monster, and this one, he pulled to right. And this ALCS will live on for game five.